I've managed to get the uh, file started down in this groove by bracing it a little cockeyed so that it only was removing material from the side that was slightly thicker that I wanted to remove and then straightening it out a little bit as it started to make that groove and now I'm going straight down and I think you should be able to see that I'm just removing material from that left hand side I don't know this camera's not the best as I'm working my way down through that groove and I am using a, a metal file that they call the type of file is called a bastard file and the thing with files is that they have teeth that cut in one direction and the teeth on this cut in the pull on the edge so it's the pull that I want to do I don't want to saw back and forth or I'll dull the file you just want to use the teeth in the correct direction so I'm going to work my way down through that groove and when I'm done dressing it with this file it should have a very nice sharp profile that closely mirrors the uh, profile of the file and that'll be exactly the right thickness to engage that clutch arm. Continuing the process you can see I've gotten most of the way down there but I have to be completely honest and say that metal working with hand tools it takes a long time and it's difficult. Alright there she is. I've got that slot mostly dressed with the file The file is the exact same thickness as the clutch arm, so that slot just perfectly engages the clutch arm. And the slot is just a little bit shallow, and I can always make the slot deeper. That's what you want. You want the slot to be a little bit shallow, and then you can always make it deeper. If you've made it too deep, then you have to make a new part. Oh, damn it. The darn thing doesn't want to cooperate. There we go. You can see, or maybe you can't, but the hole in the, in the clutch lever, I think I keep calling it a brake arm, but anyway, the hole in the clutch lever is not, does not quite line up yet with the hole in the piece that I'm making. So that means that slot needs to be a little bit deeper. Also, you can see this rectangular groove in the clutch arm where the old piece used to engage it, and I think that that just wore down over the years. I'm going to probably take this to a, uh, a welder or a machine shop and have that filled in and then filed flat again. Okay, here's the arm, the stock piece, and here is the plunger that was on there that's broken. And you can see <clears throat> that uh, notch right here in the arm where over the years this uh, stock plunger piece wallowed out that uh, that notch. Originally the stock piece was like that but after years and years of rocking back and forth gently like that it's recessed itself into the arm right there. You can see if I line those holes up exactly in the stock piece that then I, I can push it all the way past that so the holes don't almost line up anymore at all and that's how I know that bit is recessed because if the holes line up then there's a lot of slack but if I push that flush with that recessed portion then the holes don't line up at all. So what to do? I will take this clutch arm to a machine shop or a welder and have them fill in that gap and then grind it back flush so that it's the same level as the rest of the arm uh, before I put on my new uh, plunger. You can see the difference in diameter. The new plunger is going to be much more robust than the old piece that it replaces here. Um, much step more stout, thicker diameter, and it should last forever. Well, at least it'll last for a really long time. The uh, stock piece had a cupped end that the rod was in, and maybe there was a ball bearing inside that cup, I don't know. Um, it's long since gone if it was in there. But what my intention to do is once I have this arm straightened back out, I will attach the new piece 
and I will cut it to length. This is obviously way too long now, but I'll use the stock piece as a guide and I'll cut it to length and I'll, it'll have a flat end after I cut it and right on the end of that I'll drill a hole, I'll drop a ball bearing in there and then I'll put little divots on either side of that hole to pinch the metal in over the ball bearing so the ball bearing will still roll and as it rolls back and forth over the clutch, uh, clutch rod it'll, it'll push it in but that ball bearing will provide a little of uh, less resistance going back and forth and the two pieces of metal won't mash each other. This linch pin that I'm turning in to uh, the plunger has a good example of what I'm talking about on it. You can see the side of this linch pin has a ball bearing that's held in exactly the way I'm describing. They drilled a hole in the side of this linch pin originally, they put a ball bearing in there, and then they just mashed the metal on either side of that hole to hold it in there. This linch pin, the, the ball bearing in the linch pin is just slightly different than what I'm going to do though, because there's a, uh, there's a that, that's kind of a deep hole that, that they put that ball bearing in, and before they put the ball bearing in there, they put a little spring behind it so you can push it in. You know, that's why linch pins go chip 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 chip, because that ball bearing's on top of a spring and it gives a little bit. Mine won't have that spring behind it. And heck, I, I'm, I might even reuse that ball bearing, but, uh, well, no, I'll get a new ball bearing. In order to grind that metal away, I'd probably nick the ball bearing, and that would be bad. All right, so that's the plan. Clutch arm goes to uh, the machine shop, and then we'll cut this to size and put the ball bearing in the end of it.